Over the last 18 months, we have been undertaking an inspection program of providers of online general practice sort of primary care remote prescribing. Around 50% of those providers um, failed to meet uh, the regulations of delivering a safe and effective service. I am pleased to say, though, that on re-inspection of those providers, um, around 80% of them had improved. The key issues are around safeguarding vulnerable people. Uh, so when you don't have the patient in front of you, how can you ensure that you're protecting those that are vulnerable? How can you safely prescribe medicines for patients when actually you don't have their full medical history? How do you know the patient or the user is who they say they are? I was the uh, minister at the time that the uh, whole system demonstrator uh, mm. project uh, landed and the, and the ill-fated Three Million Lives campaign was launched. It showed a 45% reduction in mortality uh, rates uh, significant reductions in, in uh, emergency admissions, but it, it, it was not evidence that in the end led to uh, a wholesale transformation and adoption of the sort of ambition that the Three Million Lives program had. And I think that was for two reasons in particular. One, uh, because the evidence was built around adding technology to business as usual uh, and not actually fundamentally questioning whether the, the service model that you were adding the technology to itself should be transformed and changed. Uh, and secondly, um, perhaps there was a rush uh, to, to act on the very early headlines of that uh, research and not uh, then to, to look at some of the other questions and make sure that there were clear answers. And I think thirdly, uh, what was missing from that was the connection between the ambition and the delivery mechanisms and program management necessary to make it happen. This needs to start with actually the service transformation that's occurring uh, across the health and care sector. This shouldn't be a set of technology-led initiatives. Secondly, then, is around local leadership. Um, so actually, who on your uh, CCIO, your clinical boards, your SDP boards, is actually saying, this is a service transformation I need to enable, and actually, as a result, this is the role of digital that I need to be able to support this. Uh, thirdly, around digital readiness. Uh, so actually, what are the scars, what are the bumps in the road uh, that have been felt? We know this isn't a perfect plain sailing journey. There are things that go right. There's things that you need to learn from. So actually, the evidence base around what's worked well, what are the challenges around digital implementation, and how have you overcome those? Um, and then finally, kind of painting the, the picture of the future. So one of the key points around local health and care records is, yes, there is an immediate need to join up health and care information. That's, in effect, an expectation that most of us already have. But actually, how can I then utilise that information for more effective planning of services? In my definition of, of digital, uh, it's mm. probably worth mentioning, uh, is about evolving the way we connect with people. And for PHE, given our mission, it's the way we uh, connect with not only people at the individual level, uh, but how we uh, mobilize and activate communities. But the idea of a people-centered approach is fundamental uh, to digital delivery. Uh, and of course, this is, uh, to an extent, also about reconciling two paradigms. The idea that you only move on initiatives with a degree of certainty uh, based on evidence uh, and knowledge gathered over a number of years versus the digital mindset, uh, which is really just coming up with a hypothesis and looking to test that and improve that through, uh, through feedback. And our idea of how to deal with that is, is by taking some projects and bringing together uh, all of the experts across PHE, both from a digital standpoint, but also subject experts in terms of clinical um, backgrounds. We're already booking, we're banking, we're travel, everything we're doing online. And then you walk into a, a building that has an NHS badge and you drop your digital space and you pick up paper. And then we do the same with our staff. So. You know, we, they are, again, mm. extremely technical, and then they walk in and they start operating um, uh, in, in an anal analogue model. And we've got to look at what are we trying to do and actually embracing some of the opportunities that we have there. So what we've got to do from an NHS digital perspective is not direct from the centre. We've got to really understand the end user, be it the patient, be it the clinician, and, and everything in between, and we've got to take advantage of the opportunity that we've got right now uh, with technology.